Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna to sit down and share with you things that I've been loving for the month of April. So if you are curious to see what I've been loving, beauty, lifestyle, books, etc., then just keep watching. Okay, first off, we'll start off with some things I have on right now. Um, you guys know I am a big, big fan of the Christian Audette and Mel Thompson Beauty Lipstick. Mel is no longer with us, but I believe you can still get this beauty lipstick. It is such a gorgeous, like, nudie shade. It looks peach on my hand, but honestly, it just looks like a nice nude shade, and I love this. I wear it off over all sorts of lip liners. But my most favorite combination is this lipstick with the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Cool BFF, which is a very cool tone lip liner. So you have like a cool pinky nude and then like a warm peachy nude and together you get this, which I think is just really, really flattering any time of the year. So I've been loving these. A moisturizer that I've been really enjoying is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost City Shield Facial Gel Mist. And I don't know if this still exists, but I know, um, Clinique has a spray moisturizer similar to this. And that's kind of what I like about it is you can kind of spray it onto your face or spray it onto your hand and apply it quickly. And it has hyaluronic acid, which is really nice. It smells like their typical Neutrogena moisturizer products. I just really enjoy it. I mean, I'm already down to here. I expect to finish this probably in the next month or so. So stay tuned to see this in future empties videos, but I've been really enjoying this. It's just easy to apply. It sinks in really well. Some other prep products that I've been really enjoying lately. The first is the Cream Shop. This is the Clean Canvas Pink, and this is like a cushion, I don't know. It was listed as a primer, but it's essentially a pink cushion. And I like to use this under my eyes to help color correct. And it honestly has really, really amazing coverage. I used this today on my face all over. I don't think I went in with concealer. No, I used this under the eyes. I used it to cover some blemishes. I used it to cover redness. Like this product is no joke. Like there's coverage. Can you guys see that? So I will take a sponge and I will dip in here, put it on the face and it covers anything. So um, yes, it does look a bit bright and intimidating. So obviously I wouldn't use it all over the face. I use it as a first step and then I go in with my foundation, but I think it does such a great job at color correcting, brightening, concealing all at once. And I would say this one is more so peach than pink, even though it says pink. If you want a true pink, I would say go with the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. And this one is in the shade Brightener. I love this. It's a really, really light pink. And I will also use this under the eyes to brighten sometimes instead of concealer, sometimes after concealer really nice products this one has a ton of coverage and is more more peachy versus this one which is more brightening and like a light pink shade so the cream shop and the maybelline another product that i have on today this is the l'oreal lumi shake and glow dew mist and again i'm i have about a third of the product left so sometimes when i feel like i've gone a little heavy with the powder i will spray this all over and it adds this beautiful glow so I will usually spray it all over my face and then go back in with my powder puff just on the areas where I don't want to look greasy, like here and here. And so it's glowy everywhere else, but matte in the places that you want it matte. So I really enjoy this and I've been running through that. And I should have told you guys what I did today. I did some graphic liner and then I used a little blue mascara on the bottom. This is the Maybelline Snap Mascara. And for the liner, I used the Almay this one called like the raisin color and then one of the rimmel wonder swipe liners to kind of get a fun shape but back to the favorites all right so what else do i have on my face today brows i've been really enjoying the benefit gimme brow so much so that the uh writing is worn off mine i want to say is in the shade three but like i said it's all worn off but it's the one that has the little brow spoolie and the colored fibers and i have been going back and forth in my brow. That's all I have in my brows today. That's it. So I've been going, I brush through, I brush back and forth to get them coated and then I brush them up and this is the effect that I get. And I really like that. It looks fully filled in, but it still looks very natural. So I didn't have to draw in any brow hairs. I just kind of colored and thickened the ones that were already there with one product. So it's like one and done, easy, really enjoying this. Some eyeshadows that I've just been waiting to tell you guys about are the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Clean Color 
shadow claws. These are fantastic. I have been wearing these almost exclusively since I tried them. I mean, by the time I edited and got everything up, I've been trying these probably for like six weeks now. These are so good. My favorites are Golden Toffee, Cool Berry, Dreamy Pink, and Spiced Copper. And I feel like I have one more, yes. And then I also like the like Smoky Gray one, which I have in a travel bag. These are so, so good. I can't say enough about these. These are fantastic. And if you guys want to see swatches of all of them, looks, try on, application, I have a dedicated video of the CoverGirl shadow quads. All right, moving on, under eye prep product that I've been enjoying, again, with like the pinky peach theme. This is the Replenix Tinted Brightening Eye Cream. It has peptides, hyaluronic acid, Idleweiss. So this is a pink cream with a metal applicator. And it's somewhere between the two colors that I previously showed you. So this was the Cream Shop, this was the Maybelline, and this is Replenix right here. So it's like a lighter peach. And I honestly love all of these. Just kind of depends on what kind of concealer I want to put on top of it. If I want like a full coverage concealer, I can go with this super deep orange. If I'm using like more of a lighter tone, I can go with this peach to color correct. If I'm not using much of a concealer at all, then I go with the Maybelline pink shade. But I love that I'm getting like skincare plus color correction with this product, so highly recommend. Moving on to a fragrance that I've been really enjoying this month. It's very summery and tropical. It's this one from Victoria's Secret. It is the Bombshell Isle. The packaging is really pretty. It's got like a clear, almost like gemstone looking top, a little iridescent tassel, it's striped. It's like a baby blue color. If you enjoyed the Physician's Formula Butter Paradise scent that they came out with a few years ago, you would really enjoy this one. It definitely has coconut in it. It has some flower, a little bit of fruity essence. I've been really enjoying it. So loving this. I also have the body splash and the lotion down by my sink. I find myself using it often. Face product that I've been using a lot. I might have mentioned this one last month because I feel like I was using this a lot last month too. It's the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer. I brought this out for a dupes video where I was testing it against Fenty. And honestly, I like this one better. Um, I'm in the shade one. It's a very fair and somewhat cool shade. Um, I just find it very flattering. I've been going a little lighter on the bronzer. I feel like it looks more youthful when I go lighter on the bronzer. Um, I went a little bit heavier on blush today. I used the Deck of Scarlet Peachy Keen 3-in-1 Highlighting Product, and I love using this liquid as a blush. So I've been finding like glowier skin and heavier blush is a bit more youthful than packing on the bronzer. So I go light handed, but it's been a favorite. Another face product that I discovered this month and have been obsessed with this month is the Essence Kissed by the Light Illuminating Powder. And this is Star Kissed, not the deeper one. I did not enjoy the deeper one. The deeper one was just straight up gold shimmer. This one is beautiful. You can tell how loved it is. Like it is so worn down. The shades are all running together. It's just a beautiful, warm, bronzy glow. And I will dust this all over the forehead and on the cheekbones for just that like beachy, summery glow. And it's so beautiful and so flattering. Another face product that I fell back in love with this month is the MAC Blush in Gingerly, I believe it is. My sticker is gone. I don't know what happened to it, but I'm pretty sure this is Gingerly. This is the shade that Mel Thompson convinced me to get a couple years ago. It's beautiful. It's like a rich peach. Um, very, very flattering. I really enjoy this color. I've been using a lot with pinker blushes. Like I'll do like a little bit of a lighter pink here and then I'll go in with this shade back here. It's not what I have on today, but that's kind of been what I've been loving and it kind of gives that like depth, almost like a bronzer. So I've been loving this. A lip product that I've been using every single day before applying my makeup is the Estee Lauder Pure Color NV Lip Repair Potion. I even took the stopper out so I could get all of the product out. This stuff is so good. First step, last step, super hydrating, super moisturizing. It makes my lips look juicy and full every single time. Love this. New lip liner obsession, the Pillow Talk lip liner from Charlotte Tilbury. This one is in the shade Medium which I like, but I'm curious to see what this first shade looks like because this one's a little bit on the deep side, but really flattering, especially with like that lip product from Estee Lauder or like a clear gloss over it. Speaking of a gloss, 
the ColourPop Luxe Gloss, and this one's in Electric. This is a beautiful, like, milky peach color to put on top of just about anything. And I've been loving this. Like, all of these shades are very flattering together. This one with this one. These with this. It smells like a creamsicle, so what's not to love about creamsicles? A lipstick from Essence that I discovered is number nine, Special. This is a really, really pretty color as well. A bit more on the pinky side. So here we had more of like a nude shade. This one's more of a pinky shade. These are beautiful together and I've been wearing them a ton together, topped off with this gloss. Really gorgeous and amazing formula for like $3. Okay, and then my last two favorites of the month are books. The first is a trilogy that I read, oh, probably in three or four days. I actually got my mom hooked on it. And book four is coming out this summer, which I'm really excited about. But let me just say the trilogy does kind of wrap up at a nice place. So I feel like you don't have to read the fourth or wait for the fourth book to come out. But I am curious to see what will happen in the fourth book. And I can't tell you any more without giving you spoilers. But it's this one, The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The premise of the story is that this young girl, like 17, 18, is left with a millionaire's fortune and she's never met this millionaire billionaire. Um, but the caveat is that she has to live in his mansion with all of his relatives for a year before she can inherit everything. And the way the old man's mind works was puddle, puzzles and riddles and secret codes and secret compartments. So she lives in this house, which is like an escape room with all these hidden doors and entryways and puzzles to solve. And you have to go from one puzzle to the next to figure out where it leads. And she's so interesting. The author is truly brilliant for coming up with all of these little rhymes and riddles and way things connect and one clue leads to the next. Really, really, really interesting. It's like, I want to say it's like Hunger Games with how easy of a read it was mixed with an escape room. So if you enjoy either, highly recommend this series. Definitely check it out. Mine is a library book, which I'm returning shortly, but loved it. And then the other is a completely different topic. This one is called The Black Friend on Being a Better White Person by Frederick Joseph. If you are white, educate yourself about race relations. I will admit I was completely naive to just about everything before I became a mom of a black boy. Um, since that time, I have found myself getting more and more invested in black culture, learning about black history, educating myself on terminology and preparing my child to be a black boy, a black teen, and hopefully a black man in our world. There is so much that is so unfair. And I feel like a lot of white people just don't know that they are being racist with simple little comments. Like when someone mentioned to me that, well, at least your son will be good at sports. My son is smart. He could do so much more than sports. He could be a surgeon. So starting with that, don't just tell a parent of a black child that I bet they're good at sports. Compliment them on their brains, on their artistic skills. Don't tell them that they speak well for a black person. That is also not okay to say. Um, there is no black way to speak. Uh, so there's just there's just so much I feel like white people need to educate themselves on. And this is just like a glimpse into the basics. And he also has like what he calls his encyclopedia of things in the back that you should know, like terms like Black Lives Matter, systematic injustice, microaggressions, melting pot of society, like things that you probably have heard of, but not necessarily understand fully so so good it was such a fast read and i found it to be so helpful so highly recommend read this book it, i do have to admit it's been very hard having the talk with my son and when you have black children the talk is not about reproduction it is about how you behave around people that have influence or police officers or just how you act in public you don't have the ability to act like little white boys, like my seven-year-old white son can goof off, throw sticks, walk up people's driveways, walk on their curb. My black son cannot do those things. He cannot throw sticks into someone's yard. He cannot like teeter on the edge of someone's property. I mean, yes, obviously our neighborhood knows us, but these are things that like I have to teach him he cannot do 
for fear that someone will pull out a gun and shoot him because he's on their property because he's a black boy. These are things that white parents don't have to think about. People with white children don't have to think about. It is terrifying. So educate yourself. That's all I'm saying. So that is it for my monthly favorites. Let me know down below what you've been loving this month. I'd love to hear. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.